about the inverse tension of s over t meaning overall what are you doing why are you no good morning fellow mathematicians welcome back to another video sam you dropped an absolute bomb on your channel your generalization was pretty amazing once you pulled out that cosecant series ex expansion with regards to the cosine just went totally berserk. I gave it to you, that was amazing, but today I'm going to really drop a bomb. We are going to deal with this generalization today. You might recognize this integral as one we have done before, just it, it was one of infinitely many special cases. This time we are going to take a look at the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative t to the x alpha times cosine of s times x to the alpha, where Alpha is of the form 2 times n, so positive, even integer without zero at the moment. Okay, this is going to be a really special case, and I have to make this a two part thing. S is going to be out of the real numbers, it can be anything, possibly also complex, I don't know. And t is element of the positive reals, including zero, so t can be equal to zero. Okay, we can take the limit. This is what we are going to do today. Also, I created a new channel, Flamble Maths 2. More information on Sunday, go subscribe to it, link at the top of the description. Also the new merch just dropped, this is the most beautiful equation in mathematics. And I'm going to see you in a second after the meme intro. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. So here we go, obviously you can also find Sam's video down there at the top of the description. Check it out, it's seriously amazing. Go subscribe to Sam such that he can reach the next 1000 subscribers. Okay. This right here is pretty amazing and I'm going to go through it kind of hand wavy because one step in there is not extremely hard to justify, but you have to find a certain path in the complex plane. We are going to talk about this in a second. At first, let us recognize what we did with the last integral, the, the special case. Cosine is nothing but the real part of the complex exponential function with this as the argument. So, we are going to rewrite it a little bit. Also, I want you guys to notice that if alpha is positive and even or even in general, then this integrand is also even. Meaning an integral from negative infinity to infinity just becomes two times the integral from zero to infinity. So let us put everything on the chalkboard that we have gathered up until this point. This is equal to two times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t times x to the alpha times the real part of e to the i s x to the alpha integrated with respect to x. Now we are in the real numbers at the moment and even the complex numbers they form a Banach space and we can thus interchange those two operators, the integral operator and the real part operator. Let us bring the real part to the outside and let's use the functional equation of the exponential function to bring this together to some common exponent. Okay so this is nothing but two times the real part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the, okay, I'm going to factor out negative x to the alpha up here, so negative x to the alpha, the reason for this will become apparent in a few minutes, times, okay, this is positive, t minus is, integrated with respect to x. Now, how can we continue from this point onwards? Well, we would like to trace everything back to the gamma function. Gamma function is extremely useful and we want to make more use of it. Now, here comes the thing in where I said it's going to be a little bit hand wavy and you can fill in all the details down there in the description if you wish. Drop me a little LaTeX document, I'm going to feature it on my channel. I'm going to go through the whole process if you send me something, okay? Um, we are going to substitute x to the alpha times this complex chis right here for some new variable. Let's call it um, let z to the alpha be equal to exactly this. x to the alpha t minus is. Now we can divide both sides by t minus is. It's never ever going to be equal to zero because t is a real number and we can't really get rid of our um, of our part right here, of our imaginary part, except both are equal to zero, but then our integral is just um, trivially zero, okay? Wouldn't make any sense to be honest. 
Meaning, divide both sides by it, take the L half root on both sides and implicitly differentiate it, leaving us with d z over t minus i s to the 1 over alpha is equal to dx. Now, I've got something in my eye. Now I got rid of it. Perfect. <laughs> we can plug everything into here and see what we get for now. This is 2 times the real part of some integral. Okay, let's, let's talk about this in a second. e to the negative z to the alpha dz over t minus i s to the 1 over alpha. And here is where the real fun comes in. In normal case, if this weren't imaginary right here, you can just plug in 0 and infinity and everything would work out. Actually, if we let x go to 0, then everything goes to 0. Lower bound is 0. Now we have a problem. If we let x approach infinity, this is basically, well, some complex number times infinity, i times infinity, would be our z to the alpha, our upper bound. i times infinity would be z. This is weird. What could we do about this? In a normal case, you can just let it go to infinity if everything works out in the complex plane. Thing is, in the complex plane, you can take a lot of paths, okay, you can know the way, but there are infinitely many ways you can basically take in the complex plane. And for example, one example are the Fresnel integrals. If everything works out nicely, then we just need to show, using complex analysis, that our integral over some path gamma, okay, of for example e to the negative z alpha, is the same as the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative z to the alpha, okay, or in this case with an i. You can't really substitute this right here. Our integrals only really define our up and our bounds for basically real values. This is just basically an abuse of notation that we are going to do here. But it works out if you choose the right path. For, for this example, for example, for this example, for example, if we have alpha being equal to 2, this turns out to be the Fresnel integrals and the path you need to choose is like this piece of a cake right here, okay? With an angle of pi over 4, and then this goes to r and this is our path gamma. And then you can actually show that those two are equal overall. You can go through the same process, so this is for alpha being equal to 2, you can go through the, uh, through the same process for some random arbitrary alpha. And then actually show that over the path, over this contour in the complex plane, it's actually equal to this interval from 0 to infinity. It's a bit of work you have to do. You have to get lucky and find the right path. But if you do, you're actually going to end up with this thing right here. We are going to continue with this. Maybe I'm going to make a little uh, complementary video on this topic, a little complex analysis um, throw in, okay, for you guys. But up until then, we are just going to assume that this holds. After doing the substitution, i times infinity just becomes infinity over a certain path in the complex plane. With that out of the way, we can actually move on. Let us bring this part 1 over to the 1 over alpha to the front, but keep it in the real part, okay, because this is a complex number. And also we are going to introduce yet another substitution. Let z to the alpha be equal to, I don't know, eta. I love using eta. Let z to the alpha be equal to eta. That also means that eta to the 1 over alpha is nothing but z. And now if we implicitly differentiate both sides, we get that 1 over alpha, eta to the 1 over alpha minus 1, d eta, is equal to dz. Now we can plug everything into here and see what we get. This time we don't need to look for anything, okay? If we let z go to 0, eta goes to 0. If we let z approach infinity, eta also goes to infinity. Okay, this is the only kind of hard step to verify. Okay, after that it becomes quite easy to be honest. Now, this is now equal to 2 times the real part of, um, I put this other one to the front, so 1 over t minus i s to the 1 over alpha, integral from 0 to infinity of, what are we going to get? 1 over alpha, I'm going to bring it to the front, okay, it's not um, dependent on our variable of integration eta, and then e to the negative eta, eta to the 1 over alpha minus 1 d eta. Closing off the brackets, 
And then we are basically done because you might recognize that this thing right here is just the gamma function of 1 over alpha exactly. Meaning overall we are going to get 2 times 1 over alpha gamma function of 1 over alpha of the real part of 1 over t minus is to the 1 over alpha. Now you can bring this together using the functional equation of the gamma function to arrive at gamma of 1 over alpha plus 1, but you don't need to do this because this is a bit more convenient to calculate in most cases. Other than that, the only thing left is to find out what the real part of this thing actually is. I'm going to expand this fraction a little bit. We are going to expand it by exactly the complex conjugate of this thing, okay, keeping the 1 over alpha to the outside. So expanding it by t plus is to the 1 over alpha over t plus is to the 1 over alpha. Overall, this thing is going to stay up here. What we get down here in the denominator is just basically um, the magnitude of this vector, the magnitude of this complex number, which is t squared plus s squared to the 1 over alpha. It's a real number, we can bring it to the front. And all that's really left to um, calculate is the real part of t plus is to the 1 over alpha. Let us put everything here and then let us continue. Gamma of 1 over alpha and then over t squared plus s squared to the 1 over alpha real part of t plus is to the 1 over alpha. Now we are going to calculate this. I'm going to do this on the next chalkboard. I'm going to see you in a second. Now it's going to get um, yeah, kind of boring, kind of spicy, whatever you wish. This time we can go edge break on this run right here. So last time I calculated the square root of this complex number algebraically, but it would just be an absolute mess with an arbitrary power basically. So let us go um, polar this time. Okay, we are going to be bipolar or whatever you call it. No, it's just polar coordinates. Meaning overall a complex number t plus is is nothing but can you even see it because it's kind of wet on the chalkboard. Yeah, it's kind of okay. t plus is is actually nothing but some r times e to the i phi. So r is nothing but the square root, so positive square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, so t squared plus s squared. And on the principal branch we are only going to consider this because of our contour that we had or originally if we um, were to go through this whole contour thing. Okay, on the principal branch our argument phi is nothing but the inverse tangent of the imaginary part over the real part. So s over t. So with that out of the way, we can go ahead and raise this thing by the 1 over alpha of power on both sides. Meaning overall t plus is to the 1 over alpha is nothing but r to the 1 over alpha e to the i phi over alpha. And we know by Euler's formula we are going to get r to the 1 over alpha times the cosine of phi over alpha plus i times something. Okay, it really doesn't matter what this thing right here is because we are only going to take the real part. Real part is going to be r to the 1 over alpha times the cosine of this chunk, but phi is nothing but the inverse tangent of s over t, meaning overall, what are you doing? Why are you? No, stop. It just started. It just suddenly started. It's, it's pretty cursed. What happened? Let us move on. Just plugging everything into here, we are basically going to be done. Two times, 1 over alpha, gamma of 1 over alpha, over t squared plus s squared to the 1 over alpha. Also, one little thing, if we have r to the 1 over alpha, it's going to be um, the square root of t squared plus s squared to the 1 over alpha, meaning is t squared plus s squared to the 1 over 2 alpha. Okay, Ch just saying, not to confuse anyone here. So this is going to be t squared plus s squared to the 1 over 2 alpha and then times the cosine of 1 over alpha times the inverse tangent of s over t. 
that's one hell of a result, right? Also, we can do some simple manipulations. This thing is just this argument. I'm going to go for B right now. We are going to call it B. This is going to be B to the negative one over alpha plus one over two alpha. I hope you can see where this came from. They have the same base. Basically, we are going to go through the exponent spiel. Factoring out one over alpha is going to give us negative one plus one half is negative one half, leaving us with b to the negative one over two alpha. So overall, our final result is going to be this monster of an expression, two times one over alpha gamma of one over alpha over t squared plus s squared to the one over two alpha cosine of the inverse tangent times one over alpha of s over t. And then we are done my boys and girls. So maybe you might have noticed why I didn't go through this whole contour thing just because um, we are pretty short on time. Okay, this video already goes on for quite some time. But isn't that a really beautiful result? And you can play around a little bit at home. Okay. What is going to happen if our t approaches zero? This is one of the most interesting things about this right here. And if you have this generalization at hand, oh boy, oh boy, so many, many people would consider them extremely hard integrals, just fall from the sky. Because, um, well, you have so many things you can do with this. It's absolutely amazing. And maybe we can even generalize it even more using a sign in here. I need to play around with this idea a bit more, but, but it's absolutely fantastic. I came up with this myself. I, I started with this one post I found from Dylan Berger on, 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 on Twitter where, where I made the video on and, and then I just started generalizing it and, and it's just absolutely beautiful. This result is an absolutely major thing I have derived for myself and it's absolutely fantastic. Like I said, fill out the details down there in the comment below for this contour integral thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure that Angel Mendes Riviera, whatever your name is, Angel, you know that I mean you, is, is going to find a way to, to explain it, for example, down there in the comments or many other of you gifted personalities which are subscribed to my channel. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, recommend the channel. If you like, don't forget to pray for the cursed window cleaner. Why did she suddenly start? This gives me hell of a scare. God damn it. And up until the next video, have a flamble day. Don't forget to check out Sam's video uh, on the generalization war. Don't forget, out, don't forget to check out the second channel, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> Love you guys, appreciate you. Ciao. Verfolgt sie, Leute.